Hi everyone. What we're going to do today in our little video is we're going to look at seeing if we can take the derivative of an absolute value function at a particular x value. And first thing we'll do, let's go ahead and graph this. We have the parent function, right? We have the parent function of absolute value. So of course we know that that's going to have a vertex at zero, zero. And oops, looks like I lost my way here. There we go. And what we're looking at is, can we take the limit at x equals zero? Okay, in other words, what's the slope of the tangent line at x equals zero? So what you'll notice is we have a change of direction here. And so what we will do is we will take the limit as we approach zero from the right, and we will take the limit as we approach zero from the left. And if these two values are equal to each other, then we would be able to take the derivative and find the equation of the tangent line. If these two limits are not equal to each other, then the tangent line does not exist at that particular value, in this case, x being zero. So we know with absolute value, we have the two cases. We have the positive case, which is the one over here, and we have the negative case, which is the one over here. So we're going to take the limit. Notice we're doing the positive case first. We're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And what we know is we're going to put a plus h in for x. So I'm going to put a big parenthesis here. a plus h minus, and now we're going to put a in, all divided by h. And of course, we know that h is, a, um, we're approaching zero from the right. Okay, so let's look at this. We know that a minus a, those will cancel, and we know that h over h will equal one. Now, what I want you to really notice about this is that the value that we just got by taking the limit from the right side is actually equal to the slope of this branch of the absolute value function. Okay, so same as the slope of this line. Let's go ahead and see if that holds true for the next one. So now we're going to take the limit as we approach zero from the left side. So we're going to take the limit as h uh, x approaches zero from the left side. And what we're simply going to do is take the negative of, right, negative of a plus h minus a all divided by h. So let's see what happens here. We still have some similar things happening, right? These two are going to cancel out and then h over h reduces to 1. So everything inside the parentheses reduces to 1, which means we have negative 1. Okay, so once again, the, the limit as we approach 0 from the left is actually equal to the slope of this line. So that's not really a coincidence right there. But what you'll notice is that the close this, the limit, this is how we'll write it, of f of x as x approaches 0 from the left does not equal the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the right. Therefore, we cannot find the slope. We cannot... Um, Derive it at x equals 0, which, in other words, means we can't find the tangent line. We can't find the equation of the tangent line right here, just at x equals 0. Okay? So let's, oops. let's go ahead and let's do the next problem. I want this scroll up. There we go. Okay. And so what you'll notice about this next problem is very, very similar. 
Um, it's just that now the equation is the absolute value of x minus 1. So if you remember, um, opposite same, we know that this is the parent function that has been translated one unit to the right. And it's still absolute value, so it's going to look very similar to the previous one, right, with those slopes. And we're going to do the same exact thing. Um, first of all, what we can notice is, yes, it is continuous, okay? And I no I'm noticing a little typo. This should have said at x equals 1, okay? Sorry about that. So we're going to break it into the two equations, okay? Just like this got split into two equations, we're going to split this function right here into the positive case and then into the negative case. And we will do the same thing that we just did. So we're going to take the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of, now we're going to have, a plus h, because we're substituting a plus h in here, minus 1, minus, now we're going to substitute a in here, and we get a minus 1, all divided by h. I don't know why I feel the need to put this here, but I do. And let's remember, we're going to take this subtraction, and I just like to distribute it right here. And look what happens. a and negative a cancel out negative 1 and negative 1 cancel out, we have h over h, which is 1. Once again, that is the slope of this line. Okay, so the derivative of a line is actually the slope of that line. So I'm going to write that in here, that that's positive 1. And if you're catching on, what you should predict is that when we take the derivative here, it should be negative 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of, and now we're just going to put a negative out in front, and we're going to have the same thing here. So we'll have a plus h minus 1 minus, whoops, a minus 1, all divided by h. Very similar things are happening. We're going to put plus a negative and a positive, and the a's will cancel. The negative 1 and the 1 will cancel. We have h over h, which reduces to 1. And, of course, we have this negative out in front, which makes it negative 1. And, again, isn't that the slope of that line? So we write the same thing. We would say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x does not equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. Therefore, it's not differentiable. We cannot find the slope of the tangent line. Lots of different ways to say that. Not differentiable at x equals 1. Okay, so lots of different ways to say that, but the main idea here is because we have a corner, and that's really what the reason is, because we have a corner here, we're not going to be able to find the equation of the tangent line there because there is none. Okay, have a great day, everybody.